Hello, my name is Eden D'Souza, and I am the Stewardship Coordinator for the Roman Catholic Diocese of Calgary. Welcome to Faith Life, a Stewardship Forum on Faith. The purpose of this series is to educate Catholics upon their faith so they become better stewards within their lives. With the general instruction of the Roman Missal, a new translation has been created. What you are about to watch will help us to better understand and embrace those changes. Please enjoy. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, a warm welcome to all of you who brave the chilly wind out there to make it to this evening session. My name is Rowena Romero Carlson, and I'm honored to have been asked once again to be the MC and moderator for the second session of Faith Life Stewardship Forum on Faith, as organized by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Calgary's Stewardship Office. I read a cute little story about a four year old who was praying. It was overheard that he said, and forgive us our trash baskets <laughs> as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. There is joy in finding that there is sweet innocence in this scenario. It could merely be all in the translation. What does it really all mean? Tonight's Faith Life session is about the new translation of the Mass. This topic is on the minds of many and leads to many different opinions. While some may welcome a change, others may wonder, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Overall, however, there simply needs to be some clarification and direction as to why and how this is all happening. To help us on this path, each of our panelists will present with us his thoughts and guidance. Our first speaker is Father Kevin. Father Kevin is often teased about being the most senior of our panel, but with age does come wisdom, so Father Kevin can provide plenty of lessons in this regard. It has been said that when Father Kevin and Moses were crossing the Red Sea, they spoke Hebrew. When Constantine sent Father Kevin to Jerusalem, they spoke Latin. When Father Kevin went to Germany, they spoke German. Finally, Father Kevin gets to speak English, and they change the English on him. <laughs> With so much going on in people's lives, I asked Father Kevin, what is something you feel people have the power to change for the better? His response was quick and to the point. Father Kevin merely said, themselves. Isn't that so true? God is there for us, but it is up to us to individually make our own choices. After all, God provides each bird with a worm, but he does not throw it into the nest. We need to work at being the Christians that we want to be. To present his talk entitled, does not require inoculations, nothing's changed. Please help me welcome the pastor from St. Albert, the Great Parish, Father Kevin. from my presentation, I'm looking at the new Roman Missal from the point of nothing has really changed. So I want you to think about a few things, okay? How many of you got your flu shot this year? Okay. How many of you get your flu shot every year? Okay. How many of you felt a certain amount of discomfort after you got your shot? How many of you had sore muscles after you got your shot? Did it change you? No, you're still the same person. How many of you frequently, or not so frequently, change the colors in your house? <laughs> Never in the rectory, just not done. <laughs> How many of you, in all honesty, as husbands, noticed? <laughs> and for the wives, how many of your husbands, and how long did it take for them to notice? 
how long did it take you to get used to the new colors? And did it change your house? How many different settings of the Gloria do you people know? Personally, I know six. Six. We have Carrie Landry's, we have Michael Johannes's, we have the Clapping Gloria, we have the Gregorian Gloria, okay? We also have it in Latin, we have it in English, okay? We have a whole bunch of different Glorias that we know and that we're used to. Every year when we do the Christmas Mass, the question is, which is the glory we're going to use this year? Okay, which one would you think the most people in the diocese actually know? That's always the big question. Because you want it to be the most number of people. But when was the last time the choir actually asked you if you wanted to change? How many of you have come to church and all of a sudden the choir is singing a new sanctus? or a new Agnes Day, and you're going, where did that come from? The old one was just fine. Did they consult with you? Did they take a poll of the parish? No, they didn't. They just changed it. We have a new one. The CBW's got a new one. OCP's got a new one. We should change. We should try something new. And then they throw it out there, and you're expected to learn it, okay? How many of you actually read music? I don't. Little squiggles up and down the page. It means nothing to me. So you've got to learn it in your head. But who consulted you? Nobody. They just did it. And then we have to learn it, and we have to put up with the change. So the question is, why is it that just because a few changes are going to be made in the words or the actions of our liturgy are so many people getting distressed. We don't own the liturgy. It's not Father Kevin's Mass. It's not St. Michael's Mass. The Mass belongs to the Universal Church. And it is the responsibility of the Holy Father and his representatives to ensure that we all are one and in harmony with each other as we celebrate the liturgies of our church. The church owns the liturgies. None of us really has the right to change it. We have options. We can choose A, B, C, or D. But it's set out for us. And it's been set out for us for a very, very long time. In 2009, we received a new translation of the lectionary. So how many of you really noticed the changes? Did anybody go running, screaming from the church because there's new language? How many of you have already kind of gotten used to it? It just is. Did it change the Mass? Did it change how we celebrate the Mass? Did it maybe make us stop and think about the words we use and how we use them? but we still celebrate the Lord's Supper. Yes, we are going to see and hear some new words. The language of the Mass is going to become more sacrificial in nature. It's going to be different than what we use in daily language. Yes, we are going to hear new music, again. But since the choir has never consulted me about music changes, I'm not particularly worried about this one. Even if the dining room is not red, you still eat in it. Even if the kitchen is a funny shade of yellow, we still cook in it. And even if the bedroom is now purple, you still sleep in it. Even if the words and actions might change, or in some case go back to our childhood memories, the key is we are still coming to celebrate the great sacrifice Jesus made for us and the gift of his body and blood. <clears throat> I get my flu shot every year, but it's usually from a different nurse every year. 
I also get my inoculation against sin every day, but the prayers of the Mass change every day. It is still the Mass. It is still the liturgy of our church. Nothing's really changed. Thank you.